Hello and welcome to this session as part of Small Charity Week. We're delighted to take part. We hope you find it helpful and also please visit many of the other things that are happening this week. I'm Hilda Campbell from Cope Scotland and what we're going to be looking at is managing the stress of being a small charity leader and manager. Now it's important to know that what we're going to share here is for self-care and does not replace professional advice. So if you need more than self-care, please do speak to someone. The little postcard here was put together with people with lived experience of having thoughts of suicide and being able to overcome those thoughts and choose life. The tips are never losing hope because sometimes we can all feel despairing at times and it's important that when we feel like that, that we talk to someone and that we have something to hold on to, to help us until the waters become calmer again. There's also some useful telephone numbers there. Please, if you ever feel so despairing that you feel like of suicide, do talk to someone. If you ever feel so overwhelmed with stress that it all feels it's becoming too much, do talk to someone. You matter too. What would be helpful is just to take a moment to think. What's the biggest challenge to your well-being in relation to leading a small charity? And then think, what's the greatest reward in relation to leading a small charity? Because it's that reward, that feeling of helping make a difference, seeing someone get their smile back, knowing that in a world full of challenges, what we are doing is part of the solution, can help us, but it also matters that we look after ourselves so that we're in a place to look after others. Really important to remember, you're not a robot or a machine. You're a human being and you matter too. Let's take a moment to pause. Just breathe. Sometimes in the business of the day, we can feel that we just don't have a moment to breathe. And sometimes that's all we're talking about. 60 seconds, 120 seconds, time to call your own. Like a butterfly spreads its wings to be recharged by the energy of the sun, we too can be recharged when we take a moment to pause and be and not be doing. Just breathe at your own natural rhythm and find something that works for you. When we take a moment to pause, that can help give us perspective. That perspective can help us think do I need to do all this just now? Can some of it wait? Is some of it perhaps things that I found myself offering to do, but actually I don't have the capacity? But I feel if I don't do it, it doesn't get done. Taking a moment to pause and be and not be doing can help us reflect on realistically what can I do and reach out to peers, reach out to others, similar fields, doing similar work. And realise that you're not alone and perhaps by sharing with others you can find ways where it doesn't seem such a struggle. And sometimes that begins with something as simple as taking a moment to pause and remember you matter too. The aim of the slides is to recognise the isolation and frustration which goes with the post is shared with others and you're not alone. Sometimes it feels as if we're alone, but we're not. 
recognising barriers that can get in the road of seeking help or supporting their own well-being, identifying common challenges, hopefully leaving with a renewed sense of self-care isn't self-indulgent and it matters for everyone, including those leading teams, and also to have some idea of resources to use for self-care. Now, these are just some of the challenges of being a small charity manager and leader. And if anyone's listening to this who isn't a small charity manager or leader, perhaps it gives you an insight into the number of things people in that role have to be thinking about and doing. And it may also encourage people to think there's something that we can do that can help spread the load. Except for the fact that some people have more responsibility than others. But if we take a collective responsibility towards achieving the charity's objectives, then that can help us all have a better sense of well-being. So, some of the challenges. Organised tasks and people to achieve the objectives and targets, often for a cocktail of funding. Understand all employees and volunteer strengths and weaknesses. Use this to inform the assignment of tasks and responsibilities. Promote a productive working environment, making sure conflicts are addressed, no one feels bored and morale is high. Treat every employee as an individual, work on their needs, including learning and support needs. Don't have one blanket approach for everyone. Encourage people to speak up, challenge what you're suggesting. Listen and respond to what your team suggests. Take responsibility when it goes wrong, regardless of who is responsible. You're the boss. Be aware of all your team's personality types. Manage them accordingly, recognising some may prefer positive feedback more often than others, but ensuring everyone feels appreciated. When there's absence, make sure this doesn't cause stress to the team, while ensuring organisational targets are met, which is what your funders are interested in. Ensure people only work contracted hours and if they work overtime to find the budget to pay for this or ensure time is taken back promptly. Make sure everyone has an undisturbed lunch. Make sure the team's well-being needs are met. Have an open-door policy where concerns can be brought to you which are work and non-work related but the team member wants support around. Don't appear as if you know it all but create feelings of safety in the team that they think you're knowledgeable and can answer questions. Support people to work autonomously and be motivated. Manage the risk this may have if things don't go to plan without the team feeling criticised or doing anything which impacts on confidence levels. Serve your board, serve the community. Write policies and procedures, deal with complaints and issues of non-compliance. Manage redundancies in a way that reduces the stress on those affected. Recruitment and retention, manage budgets, negotiate terms for the team, find premises, move premises, marketing, Communications, social media content, web content, risk assess, everything. Ensure compliance with statutory responsibilities. Ensure compliance with charity regulations. Attend meetings. Sometimes wonder why. Find time to deal with the work that comes from meetings. Maintain positive relationship with partners. Maintain positive relationship with funders. Ensure positive relationships are maintained within the charity. Maintain positive relationships with the community you serve. Pivot to adapt to new challenges facing those you serve while still doing what you always do. And this can include when funding's lost because the people you serve are still looking for that service even though it's no longer being funded. And one of the challenges for the small charities based in local neighbourhoods is that because we are directly connected to the communities we serve, it becomes a challenge to say we don't do that anymore because we don't have the funding. So what we try to do is to find a way to do it all, and that's just not realistic. Engage stakeholders in everything you do. Use the principles of co-design production. Find time to breathe. And I'm sure the list could go on. Is it any wonder that small charity managers and leaders are feeling just a little bit Stressed? A little bit overwhelmed? Is it realistic to expect any one person to be able to do all this alone? And alone is a word that is used often when people are talking about how they feel. And that is why peer support matters. People doing 
similar things may have different experiences, but what they have in common is an understanding of the challenges. And sometimes being understood can help us to then take the next step, which is going to be good for us, our families, and our teams. Because we, like everybody else, have so much more dimensions to our life than simply the title we wear as manager or leader. It's important to reflect on what you do to look after you. So take a moment to think about what do you do to nourish your own self-care? And really think, what do you do that looks after you in a way that is helpful and healthy? And once you've done that, ask yourself, when was the last time you did this? Now, if it was today or yesterday, great. But if it was oh, three weeks ago, can't remember. Then perhaps you need to reflect on what can you do for self-care that is part of every day. We're all different, but there are more ideas out there than we can possibly imagine to suggest that it's good for our well-being and our self-care. It's putting something together that works for you. Some will be shared in these slides. If you go into the Cope Scotland website, there are lots more, but there are lots of places where you can find information around self-care. What matters is it makes sense to you. It's something that you can build into your life every day because you matter. I've put this little quote in because I think it does show some of the challenges we have when we're living on a pedestal. We never want to get put in a pedestal. It's just sometimes when you're in a leadership role, people imagine that you have got all these abilities and deep down inside you're thinking, oh, mm. so to the world it's cool, calm and collected, but inside it's thinking, hmm. So the challenge of leadership is to be strong but not rude, kind but not weak, bold but not bully, thoughtful but not lazy, humble but not timid, proud but not arrogant, have humour but without folly. We're only human. It matters that we're kind to ourselves as well as being kind to others and also about managing expectations of yourself, also managing the expectations others have of us. Take a minute to think, what would help you have a balance between what you need to be for others and who you need to be for yourself? Because it's not either or, it's both. We do have responsibilities. But we also have a responsibility towards ourselves. So how do we look after ourselves while simultaneously looking after everybody else. Some of the barriers to self-care can be time. Guilt that we are looking after ourselves and not looking after everybody else. An over strong sense of responsibility that everything is our responsibility. All the suffering in the world is our responsibility to fix. All the pain that people are experiencing is our responsibility to fix. In some way, we need to stop and think, is it all my responsibility? Is it all down to me? This bit here, I can do to the best of my ability, but I'm not responsible for it all. Sometimes we can feel we don't have anyone else to help. Sometimes we don't have anyone else to help, depending how small the charity is. It can be very small teams, sometimes a team of one, with very willing, helpful, kind volunteers. Knowing what we can realistically do and not overcommitting ourselves is easier said than done. But sometimes we do need to be realistic about what can be done. What we can also find is there's some things that really cause us stress, so we procrastinate, put it off till tomorrow. That only gives us even more stress. We all have different stresses. We all have different things that we can find can be something that we, we delay on. But it's looking at that within yourself and thinking, okay, if that's the case, 
is there something that I could do where that doesn't cause me so much stress and I can keep on top of it? We've already spoke about meeting others' expectations, but it's also about meeting our own expectations. And sometimes we set the bar for ourselves far too high. Then we reach that and we think, oh, I'm going to push it up another notch. Because for many of us inside, we have imposter syndrome. We're not really sure how we got here. And we're waiting for a hand on our shoulder to actually say, excuse me, what are you doing here? We need to believe in ourselves. We need to have the confidence in ourselves and our abilities. And sometimes that's hard in small charities. Depending on what meetings you go to, our voices sometimes can seem very quiet because they don't carry the same weight larger charities or statutory partners, that doesn't mean to say that what we are sharing does not have value. Our confidence in what we do and the difference that we make is also something that can help produce our stress and to increase our feelings of being valued. And for anyone who's involved in small charities, one of the most powerful things you can do is genuinely appreciate the work that small charity does and the person who's in charge of that charity. Also, we need to be reminded that we matter. Our well-being matters too. Often we're the person that everyone turns to when things are not going to plan. That goes with the territory. When a manager or a leader goes with the territory. But it's also important that we've got someone to turn to. And again, this is where peer support can help. It may be setting up a peer support group, it may be setting up a community of practice, but what matters is that we also have someone that we can go to a confidential space where we can offload what's concerning us and also celebrate what we've achieved, because often we achieve more than we give ourselves credit for. Find an exercise that helps clear your mind. If you look at Capacitor website, there are lots of grounding exercises there, including finger holds. It's finding something that can help ground you in the moment. Remember, we spoke about taking the moment to pause. Sometimes when we feel overwhelmed, we agree to something because it's like, right, I don't need to think about that just now. I'll just say, okay, I'll do it. When we clear our mind, that gives us an opportunity to actually reflect on, do I have the capacity to do that? Do I need to do that? What would happen if I don't do it? And also by clearing our mind, we can sometimes be less emotional about the decisions we make. And often it's our emotions that drive us. We care, we want to make a difference. We're value driven. But sometimes it's helpful to look at that with a clearer mind and to bring some logic in and think, I'm only one person, I'm only got a small team. What's realistic that we can do and what we can do, we do that to the best of our ability. So find something that helps you to have that mental clarity. Plenty of ideas on the Cope Scotland website, but there are also other websites that share ideas. And again, peer support is where we can share ideas together. I convene the staff wellbeing group within the Q community. If you Google the Q community, you can find out more information about the Staff Wellbeing Group. Guests are welcome. You can also find out about joining the Q community, which is a connected community across the UK and Ireland seeking to improve quality within health and social care services. You want to find out more, drop me an email. My email will be at the end of these slides. Boundaries really matter to help manage expectations. Now, it's easier to start when our boundaries are in place. If we've been behaving a certain way for a long time, introducing boundaries can be a challenge because people can think, what's up with you? Why are you getting like that? You never had a problem doing that before. So sometimes it needs to start with a conversation with people explaining, well, actually, I'm finding X, Y, and Z. I now need to look at what I can do realistically. But boundaries help manage our expectation of ourself and also help manage others' expectations of us. We just keep saying yes all the time. It becomes incredibly difficult to say no. And the more we say yes, the more 
it's expected of us that we will say yes. There has to be a balance about what we can do realistically and we do that to the best of our ability. And what actually we may want to do, we may see that there's a need for it to be done, but we just don't have the capacity. Strength of our sector is that we keep going against the odds. A weakness of our sector is because we do that, it's became expected that we'll continue to do that. But even the strongest battery eventually runs out. And if we are to preserve the small charity sector, we need to preserve the small charity leaders and be realistic about what we can ask them to do because we cannot plug every single gap there are in other services. We can only do what we can do and do it to the best of our ability. You may find this website interesting to visit. People have different views on Myers-Briggs. It's a free resource. If you're not sure that you want to do it on your own, maybe do it with a colleague, do it with a peer. But it gives an insight into, I found personally anyway, gave an insight into how I perceive situations and how others may perceive me. And that can be really helpful sometimes for when we want to start learning to get through what we need to get through and suffer less. Because sometimes it can all be very exhausting. We can feel that we're banging our head off a brick wall that we're stuck in a room, banging into walls, trying to find a door, trying to find a way out, and it's not there. Sometimes understanding ourselves and understanding others and how we connect with others doesn't necessarily mean to say as if by magic all those doors appear, but we don't hurt our heads so much banging them off of walls. So it's a suggestion. If you find it helpful, have a little look and see what you think. Finding time often comes up as an issue. And here are some resources which can help find time. 15 seconds, 30 minutes. If you go onto that website, there's all sorts of materials that can be downloaded that you can use with your team. And it's really about how doing something for 15 seconds here could save someone 30 minutes there. It's worth doing the teams, with the board, with partners, with colleagues. Uh, really, really helpful. It's amazing how a little change in one person can create extra time for somebody else. And there are other resources there. The Network Weaver Handbook, freeing up time for transformation, tracking your priorities. Again, that's something that's really helpful because it sometimes can just feel everything's a priority. Everything needs to be done. But realistically, we can't do everything at once. So it's looking at triage and what needs to be done now. And again, um, also the convener for the Nurturing and Weaving Networks, special interest group within the Q community. There's a suite of resources, which are also on the Coke Scotland website, which look at our role as network leaders, as well as improving network efficiency, which you may find helpful for finding ways to support yourself in a leadership role, by reflecting on some of the practices that you find yourself involved in some of the networks you find yourself involved in and also how you make time to look after you as well as everyone else. This is a little exercise which you can download from Cope Scotland website around what are the pieces for your jigsaw lid for well-being. Imagine you had a jigsaw puzzle. What pieces do you need for your well-being? What's the jigsaw puzzle of your life? Do they all fit together? Is there something that's missing? How do you bring that into your life? Is there something that actually you've got there that perhaps isn't as helpful for you? How do you take that away? And it may be that we need to talk to someone about this. And I know I've spoken about a peer support group before, but having peer support groups is perhaps a way to have that shared wisdom to find ways and ideas where we can look after ourselves better and bring more of those pieces into our lives that help support our well-being. Because when we're in a better place, that makes it easier for us to be there for others. So sometimes we find it hard to do it for ourselves. We can't do it for ourselves, do it for our family, do it for our teams, do it for our communities. And I'm in a plane when the oxygen masks come down, 
You don't put your own on first because you're selfish. You put your own on first so that you're conscious to help others. Because if we're unconscious, we can't do anything for anybody else. And even the strongest battery eventually runs out of steam. So it matters that you look after your well-being. And don't see it as another chore. Whatever you're going to put in there, make it things that you enjoy and look forward to. You know, if you don't enjoy going to the gym, don't stick the gym in there. If you've recognised, actually, I need to be more physically active, then look at what could I do that I enjoy that makes me more physically active. There's a video on YouTube I would highly recommend. Chinese couple shuffle dance. And it's a couple in China. The chap was quite depressed following an accident and his wife came up with this dance that they now do whenever this music comes on and it makes me smile every time I watch it. It makes me smile. And I find myself getting up and having a little dance along with it. It doesn't need to be every. If you're going to the gym, it's your thing, great. But it doesn't need to be taking out a gym membership. It just needs to be being more active in a way that you enjoy. Remember, a compassionate workplace means for you to, and it's maybe looking at how compassionate is work, this workplace. What can we do to bring in more compassion? What can I do to be more compassionate to myself? Again, this is on our website, checking your personal battery, and it's looking at where do you put your energy? How do you top your energy back up? Are there things you're spending energy on you could cut back on? Are there things that you could do to replenish your energy? Believe it or not, celebrating achievements. We spend so much time looking at what we've not done, we don't spend enough time looking at what we have. So celebrating our achievements is also good for our well-being. Another little logo, another little graphic which is on our site, uh, which we put together. Use it before every meeting and ask yourself, why am I here today? I know personally I used to be, oh, I'll take responsibility if there was some work to be done. Whereas now, sometimes I give myself permission just to be curious. Not here, been here before, not sure what it's all about. So I'm just going to be curious for a while. We don't always have to take responsibility. Really, we don't. Change takes time, a vision and a plan, and there are tips on COPE site for visualisation and goal setting. Also be mindful of our self-talk. We tell ourselves it's bad and it's going to get worse and how stressed we are, that really drains our energy. Yes, there may be things we need to deal with, but how do we use a kinder inner voice? There's a video on our site which you may find helpful on what you're saying to yourself because you are listening, which can make you much more mindful of your self-talk. little workbook again on our site, but it's really helpful if you're feeling a bit flat and it's looking at how to get your oomph back. Get some fresh air. Nature is good for us. Even looking at pictures of nature is good for us. We'll end with three invitations. What could you start doing today would be good for your well-being? What could you stop doing would be good for your well-being? And what promise, no matter how small, will you make to care about you too? Thanks for listening. This is just one small step. The next is up to you. That's my details. You want to get in touch. We're delighted to hear from you. Follow us at Cope Scotland. Go to the website if you would like our newsletter. Please remember to look after you. You do matter. Thanks for listening.